Uh, Dr. Samadhi um, will join us uh, momentarily. He is, uh, of course, the chairman of urology and chief of robotic surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital. You watch him on house calls on the Fox News channel on Sundays um, every week. We got a lot to talk about with him, uh, including what I talked about in his absence last week was, should you get a flu shot or should you not get a flu shot? And when is too late and when is too early and all that. Plus, George W. Bush, remember he had a procedure done. It was revealed uh, this week that um, he had uh, one artery that was 95% blocked. 95% 95% blocked. And, you know, here's a guy who rides mountain bikes and is, is thin and is takes care of himself. So lots to talk about uh, with Dr. Samadhi. As soon as I get the proverbial thumbs up, and it looks something like this if you're watching. If you're listening, imagine my thumb up. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Just a simple thumbs up. Anyway, um, also want to talk to him about the, the tragic death uh Along the same lines as, uh, as as the Bush story, thank God, not didn't result the same, but um, uh, Major League umpire Wally Bell, who uh, worked the uh, division series in the National League, and um, and, and then he, uh, he he died suddenly, uh, but he had had a history of uh, of heart problems. Okay, joining us now is Dr. David Samadhi. Hey, Doc, how are you? Good to see you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday to you. Okay, uh, let's let's start. You know, yes, last week you were with a patient, and of course, patients always take precedence over this show anytime. And I put the question out there, and the phones lit up. I told the story how I haven't gotten a flu shot in years for my own reasons. I wasn't urging anyone not to or to do it either way. It's up to them. Uh, but there have been several articles written, as there are every year at this time. Should you get it? Should you not get it? How soon should you get it? So you're a proponent, I would imagine, of getting the flu shot. You know something? Um, I think it's absolutely a good idea. And and the, the, the whole myth behind the flu shot is, and most people would say, I was fine until I got the flu shot whole myth behind the flu shot is, and most people would say, I was fine until I got the flu shot, the uh, uh, virus that we're getting, and it's so small, and it's only supposed to boost your immune system. So when you actually get the flu uh, influenza, you can fight it out. So yes, I think it's absolutely important to go ahead and get the flu uh, vaccine. The problem with some of these vaccination is that we're guessing that it's going to be this three or four types of uh, flu viruses. And last year we were right about 60% of the time, which is not bad, but it's not really great. And now they have a little bigger and wider spectrum of these uh, uh, viruses that we're going to cover this year. So hopefully we'll have a better outcome. I was, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was told, Doc, that uh, one reason people may take the flu shot and then get sick uh, is because they might have had, you know, it might be too late. They might have had the flu in them, or as you describe, it might not. It might be a different virus that wasn't in that vaccine. But uh, it's very unlikely that the flu shot itself would make you sick, right? Yes, you're absolutely right. And I think it's probably the second uh, theory makes more sense, meaning that we covered you for three types of flu, but then you ended up getting the ones that we didn't cover as part of that 40%. Uh, that was not covered. So that's typically the problem. And still plenty of chance to go ahead and get the flu vaccine right now. Uh, it's out there. There's plenty of supply, which is sometimes could be a problem. But this year seemed to be like like a, a great access. So I would encourage people, especially people like us who are, who are in healthcare, in the hospital, we're exposed to kind of patients. We're all obligated to do this. So that's not even a choice. But for a lot of other people, you should go ahead and get it. All right, let's talk about George W. Bush. We talked about it at the time, uh, you and I, but now, uh, you know, he's 67 years old already, former uh, president of the United States. He had a procedure to have a stent inserted um, in August uh, after a routine um, uh, stress test discovered a blockage in one of the arteries, and now it's been revealed that the, uh, the artery was blocked 95%. Now, um, you could live with a 95% artery. I think uh, there's one artery that they call the Widowmaker, which might be more severe if that's the one that's blocked. Uh, having said that, what I think what this is all about is getting checked and getting a cardio stress test. And, and you know, even if you don't think you're at risk, I mean, who would look at George W. Bush and think he's at risk? He, he's a mountain biker. He eats right. He's thin. You know, he's an exercise fanatic. Uh, and here, uh, you know, he, he had a 95% blocked artery. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, let me congratulate you because you sound exactly like a doctor. I like that a lot. Um, but the second thing is, like, you know, I just saw him uh, three nights ago. There was a big event in Manhattan, over a thousand people, and he was a surprise guest speaker. And 
he did a phenomenal job, and and he's he's a wonderful guy, and I enjoyed meeting with him. Um, and his job was, you know, since he left White House, he the only good thing that came out of it, he got a stent as a result of it. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, uh, the big message over here is that you could be in good shape and, and you probably may or may not have any symptoms, but you need to go for screening and making sure that your cholesterol, your blood pressure and, and everything is intact. Someone like him, you're 100 percent right. He was not, not he had no symptoms. This was found on just a regular checkup. They ended up getting a stress test, and they saw something on the EKG that they weren't comfortable with. And next, you know, it led to the angio and the blockage. So they really saved his life. Well, I want to I just point out that you say regular checkup, but it's not a regular checkup, really. Uh, not to correct you, just for the folks out there. Uh, I know what you meant. But um, the stress test is not something that's included in a regular checkup. In other words, it, they can't really find it in a regular checkup, a blockage, or unless they do that kind of a stress test, right? That's very true. And so when this story actually came out the first time, my biggest question, and I had a discussion even with Mark Siegel, is that why did they get the stress test if he had no symptoms and everything was okay? Whether they did it because he was a president or they gave a VIP treatment and they found it, one way or another, they found out on the stress test that there could be some abnormality. And that's how it went. Now, this 95% blockage is very interesting because a lot of times the heart can really find some collateral vessels and can divert the blood in order to make sure that the rest of the heart is going to get enough blood supply. And you that's why you would have no symptoms. Right. He's very active. He runs. He does the biking, etc. So this basically may or may have uh, not saved his life. And uh, what's the message for a lot of people is not to go ahead and get stress tests is to really see your doctors on a regular basis. And uh, fortunately, we will find this kind of uh, blockage and we can take care of it. Okay. On the other side of it, I have to tell you that the big criticism of not his case, but a lot of these cardiac stents is that the doctors are overdoing it. And instead of treating it medically, once they're there and doing the angio and they see small blockage, they're going to go ahead and throw the stent in. Right. And so we've got to be very careful. I got, I got 35 seconds, but this tragic story of uh, the uh, umpire, 48 years old, who, who just died, uh, he in 99. So that was uh, uh, 14 years ago. So 48, he was 34, and he had, I think, quadruple bypass at 34. He had umpired the uh, championship series in the division series, National League. He wasn't feeling good. He was going to go to the Cleveland Clinic, and he died. So we got we got 20 seconds, but it's a tragedy. We see this in actually in a lot of young people. You see people like getting off the plane or they're playing sports. Next, you know, they collapse and die. This is probably, if I have to guess, would be a massive heart attack. The fact that he had a history of cardiac disease, this could be another recurrent blockage right. that made the heart stop. It's unfortunate uh, news. Doc, I, I, I appreciate your expertise. Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman of Urology, Chief of Robotic Surgery at Lenox Hill. We'll watch you on Fox News House Calls. Thank you, sir. Steve Malsberg Show.